Calpad's error resolution. SENR 0606F1. Missing plan for enrolled eligible and participating student with disabilities. As always, the first step when troubleshooting any error is to consult the CalPads error list. The error list can be found in the CalPads user manual under help, then troubleshooting, or on the CalPads system documentation page in the CDE web portal. Here we have an excerpt of the classic error list in Excel format. And so from left to right, we'll go through the columns. You always have the error number and the error name. These are used for identification. Please do not try to troubleshoot your error just using the error name. So again, we have the SENR 0606F1, and the name is Missing Plan Record for Enrolled Eligible Participating Student with Disabilities. When you're new, a lot of times you try to use the error name to troubleshoot. You don't use it as a reference to come examine the CalPATS error list. That's a grave mistake. So that's why we walk through this. The error description, the third column from the left, gives you a little bit more information. Enrolled, eligible, and participating students should have a current education plan. Then the fields validated column, the fourth column from the left, the second from the right, right here in the center, tells you which fields are being validated will, will trigger the error. This is where you're going to identify your discrepancy. This is the science of troubleshooting, identifying the fields validated, comparing your submitted record, or in this case, the record in the CalPads ODS, and identifying the discrepancy in the record. So we're going to be looking at the student's enrollment history, the student's disability status, and the plan, the, the IEP plan, the ISP plan, the special education plan. We have to look at all three of those containers in the student detail screen and find the discrepancy that is triggering the error. And then the fourth column, the suggested resolution, should always be examined prior to looking the error because it tells you what to look for, right? So understanding the error. When a student is on an education plan and transfers to a new LEA, a new special education plan record must be submitted at the new LEA with the plan effective start date prior to census date. That's key because we have an F1 error. If you go back to the error number, at the very end of the error number is F1. That tells you it's fall one. All fall one errors are relevant as of census day. So that's key. And then you have a note, the reporting LEA. Uh, students with disability status record does not need to be the same as the reporting LEA. So it's telling you that the status record can pre-exist your enrollment. You do not need to submit one. And then there's three suggested resolutions down at the bottom. Verify if the student has not exited the program. Basically, if a student has exited um, the program, perhaps adding a plan record isn't a solution. Maybe you have to uh, make sure the student is exited in CalPads and is no longer eligible and participating. Verify the student enrollment start and exit date at your LEA. So that could be a discrepancy. A false enrollment record will tell CalPads we need to have a plan for this student who's eligible and participating. Perhaps the student never enrolled in your district. You have a no-show uh, any any scenario in which the enrollment record is incorrect. And then adopt the existing plan from the prior LEA using your enrollment start date and the plan effective start date or submit a new plan. So basically it's telling you in the case where you're adopting an IEP or, or any other special education plan that you need to have a plan record equal to your enrollment start date to identify the adoption. Okay. And so the CalPads error list is a great resource. This one provides a lot of information. So sometimes, sometimes you have to look at additional sources of information. And so uh, at the time of this recording, we just undergone the special education data redesign. And the most significant resource is the PowerPoint presented by the CDE. And so there's a section in the PowerPoint, when should a plan at SRV records be submitted? And you can see highlighted, a student transfers into a new LEA and is on an active IEP or IISP. While the SENR 0606F1 isn't looking for a SRV record or the services, 
it is looking for a plan record. And if you have a plan record, you need to report the services for that plan. And so it's telling you, you have a student who transfers, you need to have a plan record for the IEP or ISP. So this is an indication or this points to the greatest reason why this error triggers. Student transfers into a new LEA and a meeting isn't held, but the adopted plan isn't reported. And so this will trigger. And again, remember, it has to be reported with an eff plan effective start date prior to census date. We'll talk more about that in a little while. So another document that you'll find useful is the Special Education File Submission Scenarios document. This is located on the CDE web portal. In the search bar, you could type in Special Education File Submission Scenarios. You will find it. Additionally, from the CalPads FAQs, uh, there's an FAQ question regarding scenarios, and there's a link to this document. And so you can see that there's numerous scenarios. If you look at the scenario number, we're highlighting 13A and 13B because it refers to students who transfers. And going through it, right, the scenario category name is on the far left in a, a striking blue color, and then more of a muted blue, 13A, you can see the scenario number, then the scenario. A student on an IEP transfers to a district and the new district adopts the IEP and stay put, right? They're, they're making no changes. So what's expected? A student with disability status record? No, nothing's expected. A meet record? Not expected unless a plan review meeting has occurred. A plan record, you can see it's required. Education plan code 100. You can see that a plan record is required, right? The student's in public school, so the education plan type code is going to be 100. The reason for plan record code three, adoption, same plan, and the plan effective start date is going to equal the date the student enrolled at the district, right? And then the SRV, the services for this adopted record, the effective start date is going to tie the services to this plan. So the effective start date for the services have to match the enrollment start date as well. More specifically, they have to match their plan effective start date, which matches the enrollment start date. That's how you would go through this document. So there's additional documentation that you can find weekly if you attend the Special Education Data Office Hours. The SENR 0606F1 has become a quite frequently triggering error, and so it has been addressed specifically by the Special Education uh, Data Team. And so let's walk through some of the information that has been recently provided. So the new SENR 0606F1 is comparable to the old CERT 132. And you can see there's guidance, ways to resolve. For students who are enrolled in your LEA on census day, uh, whose enrollment status, and we're looking at the student with disability status record, is eligible and participating, ensure you send up a plan record with the effective start date equal to the first day of school and the first day of services. This information, this guidance is really all that you need. This is, you know, it's powerful because it tells you exactly what to do. So if you're not in the habit of going to special education data office hours, 3 p.m. every Monday, you might want to become in the habit of going there. The special education data office hours also provided guidance for enrollments for Part C to B transitions, right? Basically, these are your preschool students on IEPs. If a student is currently being served by a county office on an IFSP and the student will not begin Part B services until their third birthday when they become eligible for Part B or an IEP, the enrollment start date should equal the student's third birthday. If parental consent for the evaluation date is used in this scenario, the SENR 0606F1 will trigger because it appears that the student is actively receiving services. However, they are not, right? They're scheduled to receive services when they turn three. You don't have a plan, but the error is going to trigger. If the student is not being served by a county office on an IFSP, the enrollment date should equal the date of parental consent for Part B evaluation. Validation trigger logic is also being revised to exclude short-term enrollments. So uh, there's varying scenarios for triggering the SENR 0606F1, this is a unique scenario and it has been addressed by the SPED data team. So again, this uh, highlights the value of attending the special education data office hours, right? You may not have a specific question, 
because you haven't seen this scenario yet in your LEA, but it, you know, you attend that office hours, which is held like a Q&A, you get pertinent information and timely information. So let's review some causes for the SENR 0606F1, right? So common causes include an eligible and participating student transfers to the LEA, the IEP is adopted, and the plan record is missing. This is the number one most common scenario. Second type of scenario, right, or cause. Eligible and participating students transfers to LEA, IEP meeting is held, and the plan effective start date is after census day. So because this is an F1, a fall one error, the plan effective start date needs to be before census day. So even if you have a meeting and a new plan for your student within the 30 days, if if the student enrolls before census day and the 30 days is after census day and the record is after census day, for the purposes of fall one reporting, the student has no plan for your LEA. Therefore, you have to have an adopted record in that time frame. And then student transitions from IFSP to IEP and the plan effective start date is prior to the student's third birthday. That was the scenario specifically addressed special education data office hours by Brandy's team. So now let's look at an online demonstration and identify using CalPAS data some of the scenarios that we just discussed and look at what triggers the SENR 0606F1. So we're on the certification detail screen. We went to our fatal errors. We opened the container. We found the SENR 0606F1. We have numerous errors. We click show and we have a list. And you can see that there's more than 10 pages worth of these errors. And so when we're troubleshooting on the service desk, we like to right click and open tabs. And I've done that for several students. Additionally, if you click these links with the error name, it will take you to the CalPads user manual and you'll get a description of the error. You have the fields validated, suggested resolutions. Possibly this video will be recorded, added in additional information. Any notes that will assist your troubleshooting will be updated by CDE or CSIS. And then of course the other elements. If you click view, you have the record. You see, you can see the record details triggering the error. The only difference is for this particular error, you need to see the SENR, SWDS, and the plan containers. That's three different modules, three different modals. I don't need to just see the enrollment record or the missing plan record, right? So I need layered information. And so that's why I say those experienced troubleshooters, those of us on the Cal service desk will open a new tab and go to the student detail screen. So that's a pointer for you. All right, so here we have a student in this example. First thing we wanna do is compare the student's enrollment, right? So I see the student is enrolled at Cedar Middle at Hesperia Unified before census day, 8-10-2023. In the student disability status container, I can see that we have an eligible and participating student with an effective start date of 10 20 2020. So this student is an eligible and participating student with disability prior to census day, census day being 10 4 2023. And I have no plan at Hesperia Unified. So the student is enrolled, is eligible and participating, but we have no plan record, special education plan. Right, the, the last special education plan that was submitted was from Val Verde. You can see that this is very straightforward and simple, this scenario. We need to adopt the IEP, submit the plan and services for that adopted record. That will resolve this SENR 0606F1 error. Let's look at another scenario. So we have this sample example again. We confirm that the student is enrolled at the LEA. We have an eligible and participating student here. I can see that there's a meeting record we had for the student. The meeting date was prior to census day, but where's the plan associated with this meeting? And the services, 
that would be related to the plan are missing as well. Uh, and so I just want to highlight that although the error is identifying that the plan is missing, if you were to add a plan, you would also have to add the services that were prescribed in that plan as well. Or you run the risk of triggering another error once you will start looking for the services for that plan. And then we have one other scenario, right? Third time's the charm. We have a student enrolled in Hesperia, again, prior to census day. We scroll down, we can confirm the students with disability status is eligible and participating. And again, we can see that there was a meeting held, but look at the meeting date. It's after census day. So even if you submit a plan related to this meeting held after census day, and we can see that there is no plan related to that meeting, you would not resolve this error. You need to have an adopted plan prior to this meeting because it's after census day to cover the period of 8-29-2023. You were giving this student with disability services up until 11-1-2023 when the meeting was held. You need that adopted record to cover that period of time. And again, that adopted record will come in the form of a plan and those associated services. You need that because the meeting, the special education meeting date was after 11-1. So even after you submit that adopted record, you're going to fix your fall one error. But then you're still going to be missing, if you look at your DDs, end of year four should catch this, um, you're going to be missing your services and the plan record for this meeting. So you had a meeting and you should have a plan associated to that meeting and then services for 11-1. So there's a lot of correction in regards to this student's record that needs to happen. But to address the specific SENR 0606F1 error, we need to have a plan record that matches. And again, going back to the guidance in the office hours, let's see if we could bring that up. So again, going back to the special education data office hours, ways to resolve this error for students who were enrolled in your LEA on or before 10-4-2023 and whose recent status is eligible and participating, ensure you send up a plan record within a plan effective start date equal to the first day of school or the first day services will be received under that plan. And so we're looking at this record. We have the first day of school, 8-29-2023. To resolve the SENR 0606F1, we need a plan or a record with a plan effective start date equal to the enrollment start date. And of course, you know, make sure the record is complete. We need special education services to matching the plan effective start date. All right. So hopefully this is helpful to you all. And as any new scenarios are added, we'll expand upon this guidance. Good luck in your troubleshooting and your certification.